Hello, rail fans. Uh, tonight, made another pit stop in Effingham. Uh, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here tonight, but uh, just pulled up the monitor and looks like there's some activity. We've got a eastbound lined up on the CSX main and they put in their request, as you can see, but CN has already lined a couple trains. Uh, they go out a southbound line and then they've got a northbound in the siding here at Effingham. Um, I wanted to show everyone how I'm doing field monitoring. This is a very helpful tool for areas that don't have um, an ATCS server. You can basically use an RTL dongle and SDR Sharp to get your data packets and put that into the ATCS monitor and basically you can field monitor. So how I'm doing this and it's very complicated. This was a lot. This took me a long time to figure this out, um, and it only works for about. I can only get about ten miles ish with this method. Um, I'm gonna up that soon. But so basically, what I have over here is SDR Sharp running, and that is my MCP um, frequency on 800. And you can find those frequencies in the README files anytime you get um, a monitor. So this is that CN Champagne sub, and we are in Effingham, Illinois. And what I'm doing is I'm listening to, there's one right there. So those are data packets coming in over the radio. And if you listen to them as an audio, all it sounds like is a weird chirp. It doesn't really sound like anything that you can really, you know, do anything with. So, but within that chirp is numbers in in a specific you know fashion or whatever so then you take that from here you plug it into i'm going to go ahead and move this over so this is what the monitor looks like as the numbers coming in and you have to go to configure once you have that options and you go over to there was another one that just came in south effingham um options and you go to data source we are you have to use the vb vb audio which is a virtual like soundboard so you download that you can just look that up online so basically on sdr you just go to your uh output and that's the vb cable so then it puts it in there the monitor hears it pull up the dispatcher display and this is what you're seeing on the screen so what we have is oh we got one at south effingham so it, it's picking up a pretty good little distance i'm not able to get north effingham because that's pretty far away but i'm able to get these three stations here this is the yard you can see there's something in the west pass of the yard um so when these trains come i'll show you there's griffin just got some more data i think this train's up by mattoon last time i looked on the server it was right up here in the mattoon area so there's like a dead zone from neoga to effingham through like almost to Centralia, it's kind of dead. Um, so that's why field monitoring is important for this area. So um, we've got SDR over here, plugged into a, a USB cable that I'm plugging into my computer, which I think I just may have unplugged it. No, it's still plugged in. Um, so that's the SDR dongle. And then on the vehicle, I have an antenna yeah, there it goes. Okay, so we're still good. I've got a 900 megahertz antenna that's basically picking this up and putting it in here. So uh, that's basically the hardware. I'm going to get a uh, an actual radio soon, but cheapest way to do it, pick up an SDR dongle for 30 bucks, roughly. It's not too expensive. It's not too bad. Um, and then you got to download SDR Sharp from the internet from AirSpy, it's an older program. You gotta download VB cable, and I'll make a list of all the necessary items in the description if you guys are interested in doing this, but I've had some friends asking me how I'm doing this. Easiest way to explain it was just to make a video on it. Um, so, you know, basically, get a 900 megahertz antenna, get the SDR dongle, download AirSpy, SDR Sharp, download VB cable and then you gotta 
have the ATCS monitor, of course. And as far as the ATCS monitor, all you really need to do is just go to the README file, find out what frequency it's on. And then, so cool thing about SDR Sharp is you can kind of fine tune it because it actually isn't this number. This is after me kind of playing with it a little bit. So basically what I do is you can see this, this came in right here and I drag that to the very center of the, um, of the file because you can drag this around and then you can really hone that in perfectly. But um, it's on narrow FM. Uh, I had typed this in as a bandwidth to kind of fine tune it again. Squelch is check marked. Um, and then, so over here you want it to be, these have to be unchecked. You don't want it to filter it. I always zoom in to about right here. Uh, okay, the train's already in the block uh, just north of town, so it should be coming really shortly. Um, so we'll probably just go ahead and watch this in real time. Uh, I better back up because I'm starting to see it. I was a little bit close to the tracks here, but uh, basically just pulled off to the side here. Okay, it's Amtrak. So this is an Amtrak coming in. I can already tell with it having LED headlights, so... Um, We'll go ahead and watch this guy come through. That makes sense now that they have basically, everything's had to pull over. So you can see Amtrak coming right there. I know I have a lot of bugs on my windshield, but I'm gonna step out and film this guy when he comes by, so. It's pretty neat. Um, I'm gonna show you guys what happens when the CSX goes through, uh, cause that's pretty cool as well. But you can actually see every little or or red, this is a switch, each one, so. Um, there's that, but basically he's going to pull through the diamond. He's just about to knock down Effingham. I would say he probably is about to any second. Should have knocked it down any minute now. So he's got a station stop here at Effingham to pick up some people. So I might pause the video real quick while it does that. Uh, I haven't seen any chirps coming in. Oh, there was one. So yeah, this one was definitely the, I was kind of hoping it had been something else, but we'll see what northbounds they're going to line up. They may let CSX run through first. Crossing's coming down. So takes it a minute to clear out the block, but. Amtrak is always king of the road. They always sideline everything for Amtrak, as you, most of you rail fans know. So, I hope you guys were able to get something from this uh, video. Those of you that are interested in field monitoring, I think it's very helpful. Now, one thing is, all not all railroads have this option. It has to be they have to be on the ATCS um, page that you can download the monitors. And it has to be on the right 900 and not satellite. Um, a lot of the railroads, CSX, you cannot do this pretty much hardly anywhere. The only time you can get it is if it crosses over a line that has it like here. So this is the St. Louis line subdivision right here. And the only reason I'm able to see, you only can see like part of it, but CSX uses satellite and there's no way to download uh, monitors for satellite because it's just too complex and I think it's actually illegal too so you can only do this for anything that's basically shooting its data packets over the air which is free for anybody to monitor it's not there's no laws against having a scanner and monitoring it yourself so basically the reason I'm able to do this is because it's um, you know free for everybody it's, it's fair game I guess they call it but um, Anyway, yeah, BNSF and UP will be switching over to satellite soon as well, unfortunately. So right now, basically NS and, here's an ambulance, NS and CN. I mean, I don't know about some of the others, but I know CN's got no intentions of shooting over to satellite code line anytime soon. So we should be lucky on them for a while. That's why I come here to Effingham a lot, because I can literally see exactly what's going on um, in the area. And once I get a little bit better system, I should be able to do a little bit better distance wise. So now well, this guy's on the move again. So we'll watch this in real time. 
So this is a pretty neat setup. Whoever came up with this is a genius. I don't know. I don't have the mental capacity to hardly run it, let alone actually come up with it. I'm gonna go ahead and step out and film this so we can see it better. That's an interesting horn. All right, well, let's check out the monitor. Uh, it's gotta clear out some of these. All right, so they've already got another one lined to go follow this one. So you can see it's already in this block right here where my pointer's at, my mouse. Um, and it's probably gonna be clearing this block just shortly, so. They have lined a, another southbound in behind it great. I was kind of hoping this uh, they'd let this westbound through, but looks like CN's going to be king of the road for a hot minute, but um, we'll go take a look at the uh, signal there at the Amtrak station and see what's see if we can, maybe they maybe they're running hot on its heels and it'll be here soon, so I'm going to go ahead and pause it and then we'll get back to it in just a minute. Alright everybody, I uh, had to clear out an air real quick, but they got the one in the siding line to go north, and it looks like the one in the siding here is going to follow the Amtrak as it's leaving. Um, there's my error rate. I'll explain that in a bit, but basically it, you're going to get some errors. But we've got a northbound coming. They got him lined up all the way to the next block, which I'm sure he's clear all the way up pretty far from here. We'll go ahead and step out and film this. <laughs> 